Good morning. It is Sunday, uh, September 5th, and I am here again with Lieutenant Matt Lubin of the Fire Department and our Coordinator of Emergency Management, and Lieutenant Matt Nazaro of our Police Department. We want to update you on the storm, uh, where we are, and what's ahead. Um, but let me first reassure parents that our schools will be opening on time on Thursday. I've been in touch with Dr. Rubin of the Board of Education, and uh, they are set to go, and I'm sure you're anxious to have your little ones off to school. We are working uh, to clear the areas around the school of debris so that the, it is a safe passage for our students. And I'm going to turn to Lieutenant uh, Nazaro, who's going to talk about that a little more. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, good morning, everybody. We have a great relationship with our Cranford Public Schools, and this is affecting them and in, in their community as much as it's affecting all of us watching today. So uh, as part of that, Dr. Rubin and I spoke, the mayor spoke with Dr. Rubin this morning, the Cranford Board of Education and the Township Committee are in constant contact. Uh, they have assured that schools are pressing on as scheduled this week. Uh, our, I'm sure our parents are looking forward to that, and our kids too. And one of the concerns, of course, is walking to schools. The areas that are affected, we want to be very cautious. Near, near and dear to our heart is our walking distance to schools. But of course, some of those routes in walking distance from your homes may be affected. So please keep that in mind, especially uh, in the early stages of this recovery. Um, the Cranford Public Schools was good enough to put out a resource, NJ211, and we want to push that out as well. NJ211 or 211.org um, is an awesome resource that has a ton of uh, materials for you to review about anything that you may be going through currently, your children, whether it's a child care, a housing, an income issue, mental health, a lot of resources that are available to the public. So we also wanted to push that out to our public uh, to make sure that that gets into all the hands of our residents in case you're not on the distribution list from your, uh, your child's respective school. Each school principal is going to be messaging and has messaged to the students that uh, attend those schools and the families uh, reassuring about the next steps in the school process and opening and that the schools were not affected by the storm to a point that it's going to disrupt our normal opening. So that's, uh, again, a silver lining this past week and something to look forward to for our families. Mayor? Thank you. Um, in the coming days and weeks and likely months, many of you will be uh, doing uh, repairs, renovations on your homes. In, this, in these first few days, you are, many people are installing water heaters. I want to emphasize it is critically important that our building department inspect those for your health and safety. The last thing we want, the last thing you need is to have an issue with a malfunctioning water heater. Uh, permit fees will be waived. Uh, that was wholly supported by all five members of the township committee. This is the last thing you need to worry about uh, in this, during this time. But please call the building department within 72 hours of having a water heater installed. The number is 709-7213, and we will have an inspector out to inspect. I also want to emphasize, be careful who you hire to do this. Sadly, there are people who may take advantage of you. And again, that is about the last thing we want and the last thing that you need. So please, within 72 hours of having uh, a water heater installed, call our building department, 709-7213, and we will have someone out to inspect. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about, uh, there are, as many of you know, our first aid squad building on Centennial Avenue was flooded. Um, it <clears throat> caused great disruption in that building. However, there has been no disruption to first aid emergency services. <clears throat> I'm going to ask Lieutenant Lubin to talk about that more. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, so Captain Schreier, Matt Schreier at the first aid squad and I had been in touch uh, prior to the storm. Obviously, uh, like everyone else, our expectation was not for this level of flooding, but due to their location and proximity to the river, we did uh, discuss an emergent plan to relocate them to the firehouse, and that plan was activated early in the evening. So there was no disruption in services. We moved their crew and their ambulance over to the firehouse uh, for 
the night of the storm and uh, up until the end of the week. Uh, they've made arrangements with the Garwood First Aid Squad to temporarily house them there, so there's no interruption in, in EMS services uh, from the First Aid Squad, and, and you know we'll be working closely with them um, you know, moving forward. Thank you, Lieutenant. Um, next, I'm just going to turn it back to Lieutenant Nazaro, who has a lot of information to share with you. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, continuing from where we were last week uh, uh, and, and where we are now starting a new week, uh, signage in the area has been posted to restrict access to any area that was affected by the flood and it has flood damage. Uh, the signage you'll notice is a little different. It's the typical horse blockade, barricade, but now also says local traffic only. Uh, these seem to have worked to mitigate individuals from coming into the area that are, are really have no business other than to go and survey the damage out of curiosity. We understand that there are a lot of organized efforts and people coming out to help our residents out of uh, their homes and help them get back into their homes once the uh, things have been removed and remediation begins. Uh, so we understand people coming in. The only question we're going to, or only ask we're going to say, is make sure that the vehicle traffic reduces. If you can walk in, please walk in. Try not to have an influx of cars, all volunteers coming in and parking at designated locations. Unless, of course, you have deliveries or materials in which you have to transport by vehicle. But reducing the amount of vehicles in the area increases our ability to get from point A to point B, which is quite important. If you uh, have any issues with signage, the signage for some reason gets moved or, or comes down, or you feel that there's a need for signage in affected areas, please reach out to the police department at 908-272-2222. Speak with our dispatchers about that. Uh, I spoke with our, our communications officer in uh, Central Communications today and, uh, and asked them what the status were, uh, was with calls, and they said they were fielding calls about scavengers, but mostly after the fact, after residents had taken it into their own own hands to speak to the individuals that uh, maybe got into areas and, and were looking to take scrap metal and so on. Um, we, we really discourage individuals from taking them head on and, and trying to confront anybody that's in the neighborhood uh, that's maybe sifting through your, your discarded belongings or debris. Call us immediately. Again, if it's an emergency at 911 or a non-emergency 272-2222 uh, number. We do not have any objections to being the ones being confrontational with individuals who are in the area during this recovery. Uh, don't take it into your own hands. The last thing you want is to get into a confrontation. Uh, you have more important things to worry about. That's why we're out there. We have stepped up patrols. Uh, I'm sure you've noticed it's going to continue for the foreseeable future that we will have additional units in that area, marked and unmarked, to ensure the safety of you, your family, your properties uh, throughout this event and our recovery. Uh, I want to thank you, send a thank you to everybody. Uh, the other day we were quite stern and firm, uh, and, and we have to say thank you to everybody who's heeded to those warnings and remains free of that area. We noticed a dramatic decrease in the amount of people that are in that area, and we thank you, uh, Cranford, for, for listening to that instruction. Um, deliveries will still be allowed to come through. I know there were some questions about uh, how about delivery trucks? Why are they allowed to come through? Because a lot of the things that, that people need to recover, maybe from Amazon, uh, Prime, 24-hour uh, delivery, maybe those things are being ordered online uh, or through USPS or UPS or FedEx. So delivery trucks are going to be allowed to carry on and, and, and uh, carry on with their deliveries through that affected area as well. Um, if they're an obstacle or an issue, call us and we will resolve those issues. Um, debris pickups, I know we're going to talk about the debris, but I just wanted to make mention because there were some concerns about those areas that were not in the areas that were specifically uh, and heavily inundated with floodwaters and, and maybe they're in the, the outside regions that are traditionally affected by the floods and concern about residents saying, I don't know if they're going to come to my street in order to pick up the de uh, debris that was discarded. Don't worry about that. We're going to go street by street to ensure that any debris that is put out in a timely manner, we've asked by September 7th, is picked up. We're obviously going to, uh, to aim for the major arteries. Again, uh, uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna prioritize what needs to be picked up, and, and I think Lieutenant Lubin and Mayor Prunty are gonna discuss what the plan is going forward, but I just wanna calm everyone's concerns about whether or not your items are gonna be picked up. If you have debris, because of the flood, because of a basement flood, a sump failure, anything related to this storm, storm water seepage, 
put it curbside, it will get picked up. Uh, the gas company, Elizabethtown Gas, is currently in, in affected areas doing inspections. And there's been concerns about them coming to doors and, 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 and asking to do inspections of the gas meters that are in homes. This is normal and required. Um, I'm sure many of you have seen there, there was a home explosion in surrounding town in Rawway, New Jersey, that was directly correlated to a gas meter and an issue where it became submerged, damaged. Um, while you may have gas service, if your meter is compromised and you don't know it, you don't afford the gas company to make this inspection, uh, you risk your safety and the safety and security of your home. So please comply with the gas company. If you have questions, there are supervisors and foremen in the area that they can call immediately to your home to explain the reasoning and logic for why these inspections are necessary and are underway. I want to reiterate about vehicles and disabled vehicles that may have been damaged as a result of the flood water. I understand that insurance companies are overwhelmed. Keep at it as best you can. Designate other people to get on the phone and, and, and wait on hold to call your insurance company. But please, if you can, get the ball rolling to have those vehicles removed or get it into the insurance company's care that they're going to work the next steps of adjusting, removing vehicles from roadways because it's only going to help us in our process of retrieving debris that is curbside. Again, I said this last week, uh, but let insurance companies work for you. Uh, and lastly, uh, uh, debris and river. I'll say it again, this is not the time in our, in our Venice of New Jersey to go onto our uh, rivers and to canoe or kayak to see even if the water has receded, our beautiful banks, because there may be debris that is unaccounted for inside the rivers and we don't want you happening upon that the wrong way. Before I turn it over, and I know Mayor Prunty is going to talk about uh, mental health, um, just understand too, if you know someone that is going through a really trying time, uh, the Cranford Police Department, Cranford Fire Department, Cranford First Aid Squad, and Cranford EMS, we work very closely on mental health issues and as first responders. Uh, our officers are crisis intervention trained. We can get called to a house and deal with those crises, question, persuade, and refer individuals to needed mental health resources. Uh, and, and we can connect those dots if you feel through the emotion, the devastation that's gone on, whether you personally were affected, your family, your neighbors, or you're just observing this and struggling with it. Please call out to the Cranford Police Department. We can get you resources immediately, 908-272-2222. However, there are some awesome resources that our friends in the Office of Emergency Management, Ped Pickchick, and, uh, and our team of uh, mental health professionals are going to uh, really work with to push out to our community that may be of assistance to you and your families. So with that, I'll turn it over to Mayor Prunty. Thank you, Lieutenant. And uh, Lieutenant Lubin is going to share also some critical information, including about FEMA. And so let me just reassure everyone, when we have details, it will be posted on the township website. It will be shared on the township's uh, and police department and fire department Facebook pages. We will make sure the information is available to you. Lieutenant. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, I know, <clears throat> excuse me, I know there's a lot of interest in FEMA uh, support programs. Uh, so I just want to uh, try to clear up a little bit of confusion. So right now we are operating under a FEMA emergency authorization. This really is not relevant to residents. This is more for us as emergency managers because it, it, it brings certain authorities, tools, and potentially federal support to support our emergency response operation. So we are talking about the emergent steps to reduce imminent threats to life and to property. So pumping out basements, trying to do early stage uh, clearing of roadways, that sort of thing, you know, back to our emergency response during the storm. So that's what we're operating under now. Um, the State Department of uh, Emergency Management uh, through the governor has requested a FEMA disaster declaration. So that is still being reviewed through a damage assessment process. So if FEMA declares this a federal disaster, there could be two potential sources of relief. One is called public assistance, which is relief for the municipality, where we will submit uh, our costs, and the other is called individual assistance. So that a determination on that has not been made, but if the federal disaster includes individual assistance for Union County, that will then open the door for residents to apply for FEMA. So right now, and this is completely separate from the National Flood Insurance Program. I just want to make sure, you know, you're clear. If you have 
flood insurance through the flood insurance program, you should absolutely begin the process of filing a claim. Uh, this is completely unrelated to that. This is the FEMA individual assistance under a federal disaster declaration. This is very confusing, folks. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm trying to clear this up as best I can, but uh, this is the federal government here. And um, as soon as we get information, we are going to push it out. The mayor's office is going to push it out, and, and we'll, we'll provide links to uh, where you can get that information and the paperwork involved. My advice to everyone now is to take photos just to try to document damage. Uh, whether or not you have flood insurance or not, just it's a, it's a it's a good practice to get into taking photos of your debris pile of damage in your homes, uh, etc. There's a couple other things I just want to update the community on. Uh, the fire department, uh, we had over 400 homes on our basement pump out list. We are making good progress getting through that list. Uh, the expectation is that by the end of the day today, we will have uh, completed basement pump outs. So if you still have water in your basement, if you're still in need of a pump out, please call the firehouse and uh, just advise us of that. The non-emergency number is 908-709-7360. Just call the firehouse and, and advise us if you still have water in your basement. What we're finding is that uh, because the power remained on, homes that do have some pumps uh, have largely drained out. So uh, again, if you, if you need it, by all means, let us know. But we expect to be done pumping out basements probably by the end of today. And you know, we, we still have extra staff on through the day um, to do that. Uh, another thing, and Lieutenant Nazaro really touched on this, is, is one, we're going to be bringing some DPW staff and contract staff in to do this debris pickup. Please, if you do not have a, an absolute need to be in the flood prone areas. Please do not be in them because the fewer vehicles on the road, the fewer people there uh, will just make for a, a expedited cleanup effort. So I just wanted to make sure we, we discussed that. Okay, thank you. Um, I want to remind people uh, who may not have uh, power in hot water that the uh, locker rooms and showers at both Centennial and Orange Avenue pool facilities are open. You do not have to be a member of the pool. Uh, you can go there and um, get freshened up. Um, the, the outpouring of support and the number of people who want to help has been beyond extraordinary. Uh, Cranford people are doing what Cranford people do. Uh, they put aside what's going on in their life and step up to help people who are strangers, but who at the end of this become friends. I have been contacted by almost every town around us who are sending people over to help, sending hot meals over uh, uh, to our residents. It has been incredible. Uh, the JCs, on their own, started organizing a volunteer sign-up. Uh, I asked them if they would allow everyone to filter through their process. You can go to the township's website and sign up um, to volunteer. There are a number, just let them know what it is you would like to do. Donate, help, make meals, whatever it is. And I also want to take a moment to thank uh, Flag of Cranford, which was incredible during the pandemic the height, the crisis of the pandemic last year, well, they've stepped up once again. Uh, they are working with uh, our restaurants in town to provide food, breakfast, lunch, dinner. Uh, it has been quite fantastic. Um, so finally, let me go back to something that uh, Lieutenant Nazaro was talking about. And that is your well-being. We're concerned about you. We're concerned about your children. We're concerned about people in town who perhaps weren't even affected, didn't have a drop of water in their house, but are devastated and upset about what our town is going through. You do not have to bear it alone. Your children, uh, if they need someone to talk to, the resources are out there. Uh, we will be posting again on the website and on all of our social media. Um, information and, and where you can get some assistance in addition to the police department. Dr. Peg Pipchik, Cranford resident and a member of OEM, um, has provided us with some fantastic information we will share. Uh, you don't need to be uh, brave if you need help. Um, maybe if you don't need this kind of help, 
but maybe just get out of your house and go for a walk or a bike ride. Uh, take some time, take a few minutes, play with your kids. Everyone needs a break, and we need you to be healthy and safe uh, going forward. So we will be back probably in a, well, whenever we need to be back, certainly in a day or two with more information. Uh, in the meantime, we continue to share valuable, important information, as I said, on our social media sites and on the uh, township's uh, website. So in the meantime, take care of yourselves and be safe. Thank you.